Well, good morning. This is Dean Tenney. I'm coming to you from my studio here in uh, fabulous uh, Las Vegas. Now, we've been doing some carve outs of uh, various uh, stuff found in narrative lectures. And so today, the carve out, trying to make it a little more bite sized chunk for people, is a covered call. So, as you can see here, the picture of the telephone, you know, the stock has been called away. So, you know, if you're short a call, you have an obligation to sell the stock. And there's one of two scenarios. One scenario is that you don't have the stock. You're going to have to go in the open market and buy the stock and make delivery at the strike price. Uh, that's a naked or uncovered call. A covered call is when the stock gets called away and you actually own the stock. Those are entirely different uh, kind of uh, uh, situations. And so today we're going to be doing a... Whoop, looks like our Looks like our phone is ringing. Uh, we better... Call up. Oh, somebody's calling. Uh, I hope I haven't been exercised. So a long stock in a short call position. You see here, we have a short call contract here. And uh, just by way of reminder, what a short call contract is, is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. And for agreeing to do that, you're going to get a premium. But as you see here, we have the stock. So that's an entirely different proposition. We're agreeing to sell stock that we actually own. Now, whenever you have a stock plus an option contract, whenever you have a stock plus a long uh, option contract, the stock always dominates. The stock always dominates. You always want to be able to offset the stock. What we mean by that is if you've bought the stock, which we have here. So, you know, let's say we buy... 100 shares of Facebook at uh, 335. What I'm interested in being able to do is to actually be able to sell that stock. And so I'm always interested in the offset, meaning I'm either going to buy a protective put. I showed you that in the last uh, carve out, the last short. We brought that in under 15 minutes. Or you're going to generate some additional income through doing a covered call. Now, uh, you're going to get more than one covered call question. You might get two, three, four perhaps five covered call questions on your series seven. So you should be prepared to, uh, you know, answer questions about covered calls on your series seven. Remember covered means you actually own the stock. Uh, by the way, I'll also be putting this in the playlist for the SIE. You're held accountable for covered calls on the SIE. And I'll also put this in the playlist for 65 because you're, uh, you know, held accountable for, you won't get as near as many questions, uh, you know, maybe one, if any, on SIE and Series 65, but it's certainly something you're held accountable for. On seven, uh, you know, more than one, as high as uh, five of them. Okay, so let's look at a, a position here. And uh, again, uh, everybody has a different strategy for, for doing options. Uh, I like to track money in and out. So the first thing I like to do is say, okay, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? And what I'm looking at here is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. You know, so covered calls sound pretty good. I say here, how would you like to agree to sell Facebook stock at 345 that you bought at 335? Somebody will give you uh, seven points to agree to sell high stock you just bought low. That sounds pretty decent. In fact, you can use that $700 to lower your out-of-pocket cost. You can use that $700, seven points, you know, seven points is $700 on one contract uh, to uh, meet your margin call for the stock position if you'd like. And you have three sources of profits here. One source of profit is the seven points you get immediately. So that offers you some price decline protection. Uh, another source of profit is the difference between 335 and 345. That 10 points is available, perhaps. And then any dividends along the way. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, do what we call a setup. Again, a lot of ways to do options. I like to do what's called a setup. And so here, a cash out, debit, Dean likes to use, let me just put what Dean likes to use. I like to use dollars out versus dollars in. So that's how I like to proceed. As I mentioned, a lot of ways, there are different ways to do it. Now, some people like to use 
a minus sign. Some people like to use a plus sign, yeah, whatever floats your boat. Okay, so uh, we paid out here for the stock uh, for Facebook. We paid out 335. And then we brought in for the option, we brought in for the option seven points. So, you know, one thing you can do is you can just simply memorize break evens. Now, I would warn you that if you go down the memory road, the thing you have to memorize is going to continue to compound. I personally like to do what I call my setup, and then I just like to shop the answer set and see what number I plug in there would make the call as balance because that's what break even is. Break even is the same dollars out as dollars in. Now, if you want to memorize, if you want to memorize break evens, this is the one time and the one time only but you are actually going to be subtracting to get the break even. The break even is going to be the stock cost less the premium. And uh, this example, it's going to be the 335 we're planned for this Facebook stock minus the seven points we received for the contract which means our break even, my arithmetic is really terrible. So I'm gonna use my calculator, 335 minus seven equals 328 is the break even. But as I told you, Dean wouldn't have done that. What I would have done is just gone through my answer set offered to me on the exam. And uh, I would have just plugged in numbers offered, didn't tell, or just even looked at it until I found one that if I plugged in there would make the columns balance. So I look, I say, yeah, let's plug that in there and see what happens. Boom. It uh, does the break even. Same dollars out as dollars in. All right, so the uh, downside of this covered call is I don't participate past the strike. You know, options are all the way I think about it is not testable. What I think of options being about floors and ceilings. And there's a ceiling here at 345. I don't participate past that point. You know, so the more bullish I am, the higher the strike I'm going to write, the less bullish I am, the lower the strike I'm going to write. So, you know, uh, the lower strikes, by the way, will give me the greater premiums. Lower strike call contracts always have greater premiums. So I can write out of the money option contracts here. I'm out of the money. I'm writing a 345 call. I could write at the money, 335. I could agree to sell the stock at 335 that I bought at 335. That'd be a neutral covered call. And I can even agree to sell at a lower price. And that would be a bearish covered call. So we have, you know, different versions of uh, covered calls. Uh, we don't do this because of the maximum gain. That is the disadvantage to the strategy. The disadvantage of the strategy is we do not participate past the strike price. So we paid 335 and we brought in seven. And again, you could put, you know, this in 700. I like to do things, my recommendation is per share, but Again, you can do it any way you want. And then the most I'm gonna be bringing in here is when I sell the stock at the strike price, which in this case is gonna be 345. So, you know, that's one way you could proceed is you could just, you know, net that out and say, okay, well, my max gain is what I paid for the stock, 335 and what I'm gonna receive let me get a different color here. And what I'm going to receive, which is uh, 352. Now, if you did memorize uh, break evens, if you did memorize break evens, another way to proceed, and I warned you, if you're going to memorize break evens, you know, the things you're going to have to memorize is going to continue to compound. But the other way you could do it is say, well, uh, ultimately, I'm out 328 for the stock. And I have to uh, sell the stock at the strike price, which is uh, 345. Uh, and that's another way to get to the uh, maximum gain here. So you can either plug it into your T or you can do it. In, in both cases, as you see here, the difference between those two numbers, uh, 352 minus 335 is 17 points, $1,700. Or if I take the net, I'm out of pocket. I'm net out of pocket 328, my break even. I have to sell the stock at 345. That's another way I can get there.
So I've got a couple of ways to get there. And then remember with the math, you're always going to be offered, you know, uh, you know, a choice. And you know that one of the choices of the four is correct. Now, as I mentioned, the disadvantage of this strategy, and let's just make a note of that, is the disadvantage to the strategy is you do not participate past the strike. That's the disadvantage of a covered call. Okay, so you don't do this for uh, maximum loss. You don't do this for maximum loss. You do this to test question, generate additional income. Let's put that in there. That's suitability why we're doing this, is to generate additional income on the stock position. And as we mentioned, get some price decline protection, but that's not really what's going on. No, the floor is still here zero. I'm just closer to it, right? So if I had just bought the Facebook stock at 335 and the stock went to zero, I would lose, you know, 335 to zero times 100, right? And that's going to be uh, bad. So let's just put that there. I mean, that's the worst case. The stock goes to zero. But now remember, if the stock goes to zero, I do get to keep the seven and the option expires worthless. And so again, what we can do is we can just net the columns or we can memorize whichever way we want to do it. Three thirty-five, and that's seven. And I can just uh, you know net the numbers. Three thirty-five is uh, what I would paid out. I get to keep the seven. So the maximum loss is 328. Uh, please note, this is get a smaller font here. Uh, maximum loss is 328. Another way we could think of that is we're net out of pocket 328. Remember that was our break even. And the uh, case here is it goes all the way to zero. And so another way to think of that is break even when the stock goes from the break even to zero, if you want to memorize things. And let me just put a little arrow there. So the, that's our worst case scenario. Is when the stock goes all the way from break even to zero. So, um, I wouldn't worry too much about the maximum loss is the test issue. The main thing on the test is can you get the break even here of 328? And do you understand that you don't participate past the strike, that maximum gain? So as I mentioned, we're trying to keep these things under 15 minutes. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. We're getting some positive feedback on what I'm calling for lack of imagination, these carve outs. And, uh, you know, I can always put up, you know, uh, more of them, right? I can put up another cover goal or spread letter straddle. I'm just, I don't want to crowd the channel with too many, too much stuff is kind of where, where I'm at. Okay. So uh, I hope you found that helpful. Let's uh, see what else I got for you in terms of uh, this presentation. As I mentioned, my goal is to keep these, uh, these carve outs at about 15 minutes. You know, you might want to pause. I guess it's too late to tell you that I might want to pause and go back and try it on your own, see how you do. Or let me know if you want, what I'll probably do it maybe in the next time I do a carve out, I'll put, put in a practice problem and let you try it and then put in the uh, description, the answer. All right, so uh, let's look at what else we got for you. Uh, that is just such an important answer set. Every time I get an opportunity to show you that answer set, I do so. Those are our two types of contracts, calls and puts. You can either buy them or sell them. Now, the minute on the test you hear generate in income, you know it's got to be either B or D because that's money in. As I mentioned, if you're long the stock, you want to be able to sell the stock. And so the answer is B as in boy. That's called a covered call. That's also known as a buy right because we're buying the stock and writing the option. Uh, somebody told me they love this little thing here. So it's really about the answer set, right? So if you're long the stock, you know it's either going to be protective put, long the put for protection, or short the call for income. You're always interested in the offset. So if you bought the stock, you're bullish. The stock position always dominates. And so if you're bullish, you're looking for something that is the opposite market attitude of what you're already. If you're a bull, you're looking for something that can help, help you make some money or at least get some price decline protection. So if they say protect on your exam, you're going to say buy a put. 
And if they say generate additional income, you're going to say sell a call. So this is the uh, second installment. That's what I just showed you here. And here's our a third installment. Our third installment will be somebody who's bearish. And do they want protection? And I'll do a carve out on that. Or do they want to be stupid and do that? I'll do a carve out on that as well. Okay, so uh, as we always customarily end our discussions, and I'll be posting this in uh, three playlists, 65, SIE, and most importantly, series seven, because there's more than one.